set initialization. So similar to how we initialize the list, we can initialize the sets as well. And uh, this is the data. This is the syntax of initializing a set. Set in the Angular brackets data type s is equal to new set data type parenthesis open parenthesis close and that's done. So set data type s is equal to new set data type. Uh, this is how you need to declare it. So if you want to create a set which will store integer, what are you going to write down? Set Angular bracket integer variable name and then you are going to create a set and then the data type and the parenthesis. Let's create a set of integer. So this is how we can create a set of integer. Set integer s1 is equal to new set integer. And then uh, if you want to add some values into it, there is the method, there's a method called as add, right? Just add the values with the help of that. So I've added these four values, two, four, six, four, and it's a set. How many values will be there uh, in the set after all of these four get executed? Three, which one? Four. And in which order? Four. Any order, right? Uh, why this four will not get stored again? Because the values that get stored inside a set are unique. We cannot store duplicate values in a set. And if it would have been a list, then how many elements would have been there? Four. Four. Uh, and like, I mean, the, the last uh, or sixth would have been on which index? Second. 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 Two would be on zero. Uh, four would be on one. And six will be on two. Okay. Is it clear? This is how you add values into uh, the set. Then comes initializing and adding the values together. Is there any difference? Just like those angular brackets and then uh, add the values uh, and separate them by a comma. Is it clear? A string type set. So if you want to create a string type set, how are you going to create it? Instead of integer, write down string. And then this is how we do it. Like the, there are one, two, three, four, five, six uh, strings. So how many will get stored? All the six of them because they, uh, they all are unique, right? Case sensitivity matters or it, it does not matter. It matters when it comes to sets. It matters, right? Next, uniqueness of S object. So this is how sets work. Any questions up till here till now? Anyone? No? Everyone good? Okay. Let's go to. If they are not stored sequentially, then how you can access sequentially? So, but, but the order is not stored, no? They're added anywhere. So like you cannot access it like that. Okay. So that's uh, what it is about sets. Now let's talk about creating sets of S objects or how the uniqueness of S objects will be determined. First, let's recall what is an S object. What is an S object? A record of an object, right? So if you'll write down account A is equal to new account, parenthesis open, name and bracket close, parenthesis close and then semicolon. That's an S object. So can you store an S object inside a set? We can. What do we need to do to declare a set of S object? Set will be the class name, will be the object name. So if I want to create a set which will store the S objects of account, I'll write down set account inside the angular brackets. If I want to create a set which will store uh, contact and in that case I'll write down set and in the angular bracket I'll write down contact. That's basically how I'm gonna play with that. So, but don't you think like, I mean, for primitive data types it is easy to identify the uniqueness. How are we gonna identify the uniqueness of S objects? By their field values. If the field values are same for two S objects, then it will be considered as duplicate. If all the field values, listen to this very carefully. If all the field values for the S or for the two S objects are same, then it will be considered as duplicate. And if any of the values different, then it will be considered as unique. Let's have a look what I'm trying to say over here. So this is how you'll create a set of S object, which is basically account in this case, right? And over here, I've created account A, which where name is Amazon and number of employees is 20,000. Name is equals to Walmart and number of employees is equals to 20,000. Uh, name is equals to Amazon, number of employees 20,000. Once again, but this is different reference variable, this is different reference variable, this is different S object, and this is different S object. Right? And uh, then again, Amazon. And with a different reference variable and different S object. 
then I'm going to add all of these four into the set. How many of them will get added? Why? You saw that. This one will not get added. The reason is because there is already an S object which is in existence inside that set which has got the same field values for uh, for all the fields, right? But how this got added, this will get added. This is this has also got the name as Amazon. Exactly. The number of employees is null in this case, right? So this it is different. So hence it will be considered as a different record and a, and a different S object and it will get added into that particular set. Is it clear? Over here, number of employees is 20,000 and over here as well, number of employees is 20,000. So then how both of them get got added? Because the name is different, Walmart and Amazon. That's what it is. So even if a single field's value is different, the, uh, the, like, the S object will be considered as different or unique, you know, as the case, the case might be. Is it clear? Everyone? Good question. Um, give me a second, give me a second. Let's just try it right now. Three it is still. So when that when the uh, so like when it gets added inside the set, uh, then only the uniqueness is identified and stuff like that. And later on, if you add it, uh, I mean later uh, later on if you add it in, into the S object, it is something. So I mean we were able to see that right in the logs. The output is still three, but if it would have mattered. I mean, it's already stored. So once it is stored, it will not remove unless until we remove it explicitly. Yes. Uh, I think it might might have created another uh, copy of it inside the set. And I mean, later if you add something, then the uniqueness will not matter. So add it after you've added everything into that particular S object. Okay. So that's how the uniqueness of S objects is defined when it comes to sets. And uh, let's see what's next. Now let's talk about the methods which we've got in set. Right. Okay. So there is add all method. So if there is a list and we want all of its elements to be added into a set, we can use add all method and pass uh, that list's reference variable as a parameter into that add all method. And uh, all the elements inside, inside that list will be, will get added into that particular set. So in this list, I've added three, six, nine, and I'm going to add it into S2 dot add all. So in S2, uh, we've already got what? Two four six four. That's basically two four six. And now, after adding this add all, how many uh, elements I'm gonna have? So there was already two four six, and now I'm adding three six nine. Five total. Two more. Two more is three and nine. So it's gonna have two three four six nine. All right. So two three four six nine is it? what is there. It will not get added. So that's what what it is there, right? So if there is six in here, and in set we are, we have already got six, so it will not get added. Okay. Uh, is it clear, everyone? And then let's talk about the most important method with uh, when it comes to sets. It's most important. I mean, according to me, contains. Like. I can't explain you how important a uh, contains method is for me uh, because whenever it is about reducing the complexity of a program from n square to n, I've used a set and a contains method and I was able to reduce it uh, from n square to n. Very easy. Very, very easy. Right? Uh, let's not talk about complexity right now. Let's talk about sets. What this contains method is used for. 
So you've got a bunch of values and you want to compare those values with the value that you've got. So like I've got a list, like this, this is the, this, these are the values that I've got and I've got a name on my hand. So if I want to compare uh, that name with the values stored in here, I'll have to check it with each one of them. Like is the name this, is the name this, is the name this. If I'm storing it into a list, yes or no. So if I want to check whether the four, uh, four is there or not, I'll have to check it one by one to each and each of the elements inside the list. Yes or no. But when it comes to set, all what I have to do is I have to use, I have to use contains method and it will give me a true uh, as a result if that element is already there inside that uh, set. And if, the, if that element is not inside that set, then in that case it will return a false value. So instead of checking it one by one to each and every element, it will check it directly with that element. So it is going to save us time. It's going to save the uh, resources as well of the computer. So that's the reason I'm telling it is used to reduce the complexity. But the use of contains method is that if that element, uh, if, like whatever the element you're passing inside, if it is there in that particular set, it will return a true value. If it is not there in the set, then it will return a false value. So over there, 56. Is 56 there in S2? No, then it will return a I mean, I do not have to compare it with each value, each each one of the values. But what if it, if uh, there was a list in which uh, there were values? If there would have been a list, and I wanted to check that whether fifty six is there or not, then what would I have to do? Iterate it with every element and check it with every element. And and if the elements are five hundred, then check it with five hundred. If the elements are five thousand, then check it with five thousand. That's what I had to do. I mean, I do not have to write down 5,000 lines, but the loop will run for 5,000 times. That's not good, but we can use set in order to compare it in the, in a single state and whether it is there or not and why uh, it is there in set and why it is not there in list. Exactly. Because in set, we store the unique values. Whereas in list, we do not store the unique values. That's what it is. Okay. And then there, there comes another method contains all. This uh, method is basically used for comparing all the values, not a single value. So you've got uh, five values that you want to compare. So what is the complexity of uh, comparing five values uh, in a list? So the, like, I want to check three, I want to check four, I want to check five. These are the three values that I want to check in uh, whether they, they, whether they exist in your the, the list or not. So I'll have to check it like first, first do it for three. First do it for four and then first do it, then do it for five. Or I can just keep if conditions and everything or uh, operator and then I can do it. But with the help of contains all method, I can add three, four, five into a list and I can just check it or check all the three values are there or not with the help of contains all method. And if any one of them are not there, then in that case it will return a false. If all of the three are there in that set, then it will return a true value. Is it clear? Everyone? Well, it's easy, right? So L1 has got 369 and S2 has got 23469. So is 369 all three are there? Yes, so it will run a true. Clear? Next, uh, S2 dot size, size method. Size method will basically return the elements, number of elements in that particular set. Then comes system dot S2, 23469 again coming back. Then I am writing down s2 dot retain all l1. So retain all method is basically used to remove the methods, except the methods that are there uh, in the list which I am passing as a parameter. So l1 has got what three six nine, and I am uh, saying retain all l1. That basically means that delete the elements uh, which are not in this particular list from the set. So the elements which will be left into the set will be. 369. Earlier the elements were 23469, but now the elements will be 369 only because in L1 we have got 369 only. Right? And uh, if we wouldn't have got 9 in here, then uh, what would have been the output? So if 9 wouldn't have been here, if I would have executed uh, s2.retain all L1, then what would have been the output? This is. Uh, L1 has 3699. Uh. Mm. 
Obviously true. Because nine is, I mean, you, you're going to check uh, for a single value only one time. Or even if you're checking it for multiple times, nine is already there in the set, right? So if you if, if you've got five nines, if you've got ten nines, nine is there in set. It will always return true. Let's move on to the next method, which is clone. What is clone used for? Making a copy of the set and assigning it to another uh, set, and then s two dot remove three. So it, is it going to remove uh, the element three, or is it going to remove uh, the in, the value which is there on index three, <laughs> element three? Because there is no index in set, right? The values can be stored anywhere. So uh, I mean, if you want to remove any of the value, you can just use remove method. And now what will be left in the set? Six one. And then there is another method remove all, which will basically remove all the methods which are there in the list from the set. So if I would have executed this remove all L1 in here, what I would have been left in the set? Two and four, exactly. So all the elements which are there in the list would, uh, would have been removed from, from the set and the rest would have been left over there. That's what I can do. And clear again. What what is the use of clear? Clear all the elements in that particular set. That's basically what it is. I hope it is clear.